G'day everybody, today's lesson is about the way that necks move and basically what the important facts to know are when you've got uh, whiplash type pain, headaches, migraines, to get the best result for you and your neck movement. If you're joining us, type in and say hello. So here it is, this is your neck, all right? So obviously I've dissected one out and we've got one here with the nerves and the arteries that run up the neck, but basically what's important to know about necks is actually it's split into two, okay? so. Functionally, it's split into the upper neck and the lower neck, and you actually need movement at both of those to function really, really nicely and really, really efficiently. So if you have a look at the way that I move, for example, and I'll turn side on in a second, you can actually isolate the movements at the top of the neck and the bottom of the neck, and you can see the difference between the two. So if I move the top of my neck only, so I'll turn to my side, you can see here that it's basically a head on neck movement. So looking up towards the ceiling, and looking down towards the floor, okay? So that is upper neck movement. So that is right at the very top here, doing a nodding uh, sort of motion. And then at the top of the neck as well, there's a lot of rotation. So about there to there, okay? So that is the second joint, C1, C2, which is around about here. So a lot of movement happens at the top of the neck, but um, you can see mostly that it's my head moving on my neck when it comes to the top of the neck. Now, the bottom of the neck, what happens is that it's actually more neck on trunk movement. Okay, so you can see the difference when I turn side on. So when I'm doing neck on trunk, it looks more like this. So you can see there that my chin is tucked in and it's moving sort of from here downwards on top of my shoulders. So it's using these joints here to do the movement. Hopefully I can, you can see it there. So these joints here. So you can see there that the top of the neck is doing this and the bottom of the neck is doing that. And so the combination of both of them looks like this. If you're looking all the way down, like that. If you're looking all the way up, it's bottom of the neck and top of the neck both moving at the same time. And then the bottom of the neck as well can actually also tilt a little bit and turn a little bit, uh, bit by bit as well, but we won't go into that today. What's really important to know is that a lot of people that have uh, long-term neck injuries, long-term neck pain, it's often as a result of inefficient movement where some joints of the neck are doing more movement than others. So it's really important to determine which joints are moving too much which joints aren't moving enough and try to get a little bit more movement, a little bit more evenly through the neck to make sure that all of them are carrying their weight. A common thing that we often see is something called a forward head posture where basically what it is, is the lower part of the neck is in a more flexed position and the upper part of the neck is in a more extended position. So it looks a little bit like this. So you can see here that the top of the neck is kind of chin out, so it's a looking up movement, and you can see the bottom of the neck is a flexion movement, so it's flexed here, extended there, so it looks like that. And then the opposite is called retraction, where it's an upper neck tuck, so it's an upper neck bending type of movement, and a lower neck extending or lengthening type of movement. Now, because of the way that we live our lives, we're doing a lot of sitting, we're at the computer a lot, um, that forward head posture position is something that's really common. And it does put a bit of stretch and strain at the top joint of the neck into that position, which can cause a bit of uh, a risk of tension type headaches, cervicogenic headaches, and even some fatigue type neck pain down the bottom here when it feels like you just can't get up straighter. It feels like it's painful going down the back of the neck. Basically because the muscles are now fatigued and they don't know how to actually straighten up tall and get the neck moving again. So if you have had physio before, if you've had chiro before, you haven't quite got the results that you're after, perhaps it's because we haven't had the understanding that the top of the neck and the bottom of the neck functionally are actually two different things. So you need to have a look at both of those areas almost individually first and then combine them together to get the best result for your neck. So uh, if that is you, please type in below, say hello, and uh, just put neck pain in the comments and they'll ask us to start a conversation with you about your neck pain to see if it is uh, worth reaching out to see if you can get some help with that. Hope that's been helpful, hope that's been useful. I hope you're going really well at home and we'll see you again soon for the next video. Cheers and bye for now.